mumawuli le mufurumi demu ebyo gerwa kupasa senyonga nti pasa senyonga yagula abavubuka okwaidi za pasta kayanja nti yabali ya ebisiyaka amawuli yaka genze ku new vision kagenze mu monitor maybe not monitor but other publications like uh, Bukete day neko online njagade mbaite wano ntereze ebitambula side yeyo njagala ko garanti si wa id si si sasula nga ko muntu yenna si subiza nga ko muntu yenna kirabo nti singa wa iza pasta kayanja nti ya mu kozesa nja mu asent kyote chiba ve mu bufere ni bilala bwe bicho icho che chaba leta ngaba manyi ntusobola kuuliriza ensonga zaabo abalenzi bano we bajja oba bavubuka balambulula mu bujjuvu ebintu we bayisemu engeri je baba funa engeri je baba kunganya engeri je baba tendeka Nigeri jeba wa sembeza kuru, kuru, kumuanjo Nenge jeba wa koze saa Kaba koze saa sente uh, Nukwa subize vintu ebiru nji mbulamu Olu vanyuma Ne baba siyaga Kaba vumu kabano Bandaga Messages Eza whatsapp Ne text Ngaziva Kusimu ya pasta kayanja Jema nyobu lunji ngazige enda kumasimu gaba anabano chanku bawala umese jezo abana obakati omwana omunga amugamba kino chabao nakoze sebwa nalumizibwa nyine biwundu njagala sente nsobolo kwe janjaba ono mwana agamba wanko ze sa kino ni kibao mu text message sasa sobola kula banga pasta kayanja akulwe akuba inchukwe naga ncho gambye eki oyogeddo otya to chidanga ti yachegana atete yachiwakanya wabula ndaba nga asubiza sente iranga asindika sente iliyo mwana So when I chidaba, ni mpuli ranti, wali we nsonga inzo kubanti, igenda maso. So, ni wanku wa denge wibu nabi aliwo, abavubu kasa haba kiriza. Nibi nalaba, nibi nasoma, ni nsala wero butabi kiriza. Nen sabantu wabedewo meeting. Kubanga nze nalini chakiriri za mpasta Robert Kayanja. Wabedewo meeting. Wakati wange ni pasta Kayanja na haba kulembeza haba lala. Kuna saba meeting yeyo, meeting teya sobo la kujijamu. Oba kulaganti yetaga meeting. Ni wankura debe biyari wo. Sage nda mauli de. Sakura press conference Sayo gada linyalie Sakura chila racho na Wabula ni muandi kile barua Ni mugamba Che barua eno nji kuandi kidenga o mkule mbeze Haku kiriri zaamu E barua eno najisi ndi kila kona haba kule mbeze haba lala O muendu kwa hivari wa satu Ni musaba meetingi Mchifoche ya ndi agade Oba na haba antube ya ndi agado kwela mu miti ngeyo. Ne musa wane mugamba. Obo sobola. Ne mchala wo. Mulete mu miti ngeyo. Tutu ule. Mchifeche chama. Tewari recordingi. Ngaba kule mbeze. Tulabe nsonga zino. Kutu inzo zika. Kuzi wa wanyamu. Tusobolo kudefendinga. Kubanga zisigada zijia. Kukumale banga deni. Tuchi resolvinge. Tuchimalivizo mdundi gumu. Then tulabe nti. 
e kanise ku defending ku bintu bifana kana ko bwebiti pasaka ya ya sobola kuwayo kisera ku nsisinkana no ku sinkana bakolembeza abalala wabula ate e chanku benchuke inchukwe kwe kulaba anti ate pasaka yanja agenze ku police na ndopa nga yagala bansi mangu mangu kubanga mu muwayiriza oba nkwataganye na abavubuka okumuwayiriza nze na wandike balu wango wa Uganda ngo musumba nga musa batu atagane tumalidize ensonga ate ye yantwala walaje saya kala kugenda buya buye mudugu nya ku police ninge na nikola statement ni mbalaga bye nyina ni mbalaga bye nasoma ni mbalaga bye manyi we baudiza ne balaba a uh, dpp natuna na ala banga temuli nsonga era fairo ya kayanja ya alianzi guddeko na chigala ne galwao na chimanyo luvanyuma nti abavubuka uh, ababo ku bavubuka bagenda ewo musumba kayanja okwe okusaba sente zaabwe obo kugamba nti bakozesebwa ba bwe bagenda yo tena tegera nti bakwatibwa ba ruko ba bali basalimbira mu kifu ekitali kyabo abamu kubavubuka bano bibo abayina ibintu binalaba ni binna soma icho sachirimu sama na chebakola bali basalawo kutwala nsonga zaabwe mu maso kubanga nze we bave wange sina chenna kolawo duza ne watani ko kwesalira mageza amalala we batekebwa ku police twachizula anti nabo ni bagulawo musango ku kayanja baganti mu mutu gamba twasali mbidde na ye fetu gamba waliwe nsonga za fe twako zesebwa mu kisiyaga abana nabone bagumugula ko musango ne pasta kayanja na ina abagula ko musango ebyembi dpp omusango gwa abana ku kayanja na agugalawo okwe mulugunya kwaabwe na agugalawo na ye atiki yakola okwe mulugunya kwa kayanja eri abana yo fero na ajitwala egende maso mu koti ebi bi mulaba mu koti yebigenda maso fero ya abana bajigala ya pasa kayanja yo nitambula city dpp kusalawo chichitufu na ye emyaka abiri kwa abiri mu etano abantu abenja uru baze bogera ebintu ebinji ebintu byebimu ku muntu yomu abate emanyi abata kwatagana ba myaka janja uro bisera byanja uro bogere kintu kyechimu ekyo kyechangwa atake nnyo nsabe pasaka yanja tutule tulebenga tuchimalawo myaka abiri mu etano minji wadenga siba kiridi za mwa bavubuka na yate ruache tuchikwataganya ne tulabanti chigwao Obulambo ikansa ni kutambula bulunji. Pasa Robert na ina awele zanga binote bimu vila kumutwe. Na bavubu kana evo, nituba gamba mwe kule muo mulimu, oba mutelele. Nye chila vika, uruo kubanga, tetusogula kusinka nanga wakule mbeze, kugonjo lansonga zinu, mubio muoyo, echifochimu, Echinzo kutu ya mbo kumanya chechi genda maso. Nsonga zino zifana na zitia. Chifochimu ye koti. Nze nsaba. Nti. Nga pasta kayanja wa awuliruwa mkoti. Na habana wa awuliruwe mkoti. Fairo ya wena yo e awuliruwe mkoti. 
ni pasa kanja au liremo koti au tuja kusobola okulira engeri je bawozamu che balina che bagamba ni bilala bwibitu then tumanya mazima kubanga mazima gaino kubanga gali admin start gaino kubanga gawe baba na Uganda ngamaliriza sina kasajja ku mutima ku musumba yenna o mutima gwange gujjude okusaba kirumu e kanisa ya Kristo eneterera bakulembeze ni bakulembera bulunji obufere ne buva mu chachi abantu ne balambikibwa obulamu bwabo bwo moyo kwe kusaba kwange mwe balinya that's for coming um tugenda tetugenda kutwala bibuzo kubanga tuina information je muyina ho uh, tandi kila kucho ina Chenjo gede nebio ina Then we can talk, talk from uh, We can take it from there um, Here at Christian Life Church Is uh, to address uh, The rumors Words uh, Pressers uh, Things that have been put In the newspapers and uh, the sensation of the uh, online publications uh, about me. It has been alleged or said in the papers that uh, I am buying people, I'm buying young men, giving them money or promising them good things uh, to tarnish uh, some pastor's names. So I wanted to throw some light to what's happening here and uh, not very far uh, from today, in the, in the previous past, we had almost a full page in New Vision. New Vision said Pastor Senyonga promised young men 75 or 76 million shillings uh, to frame Pastor, Pastor Robert Kayanja that he sodomizes people. I'm sure all of you read that. And since that was in the public and on the internet, I deserve the opportunity and the right to be able to um, react and address the same. So if I may, I'm going to repeat this, summarize it. A few weeks ago, most of you read in the newspaper, the New Vision, that uh, Pastor Senyonga promised people young people, 75 million or 76 million shillings, if they could go ahead and tarnish Pastor Robert Kayanja's name by claiming that he sodomized them. Since this was in the public, printed in the papers, and spread out in the news, uh, out in, in different news outlets, I would like to respond uh, to those kind of allegations. Um, Sometimes uh, people believe the lie very quickly before they, they hear the truth. But the fact is, sometime in 2020 and 2021, a number of boys approached me right here at Christian Life Church, claiming that they have been sodomized by Pastor Robert Kayanja of Rubaga Miracle Center. I believe the boys approached me because they believe that I'm a good Christian leader who has for several years uh, been outspoken about the ills that are happening in some of the Pentecostal churches in Uganda. The said boys 
when they came to me, gave graphic details of what they say transpired. How they were recruited, how they were lured with money and promised uh, better lives, and subsequently they were sodomized. They showed me WhatsApp messages, communications, and one of the boys was directly uh, communicating with Pastor Kayanja, and I know his name, I know his number, I know his, uh, his tools, his communication tools. Because the name of that phone is under Pastor Robert Kayanja, and I know that's his number. I saw direct communication between this one boy going back and forth. And those messages, these boys were alleging that Pastor Kayanja had actually sodomized them and that they were injured in the process and they required treatment and they demanded that he gives them money to go treat themselves. When they sent messages, Pastor Kayanja never denied or contested those allegations in the exchange uh, messages. He instead sent them money that they demanded. Some of them played some voice messages that I believed to be recordings that took place, but they boy claimed that these were actually voices of Pastor Kayanja talking to them. So the above, and more especially, the WhatsApp communication messages and the reaction of Pastor Kayanja there too was very disturbing to me and raised serious questions and concerns in my mind as they appeared to lend credence to what the boys were claiming or alleging. Moreover to this is against the backdrop of the fact that over 20 years now there has been persistent similar allegations from different persons. Again, it's the same, Pastor Robert Kayanja. So despite all of that, I still do not believe the boys. I did not hear, I, don't, I did not Excuse me. Despite the above, I still did not believe what I was hearing or seeing, and I wanted to give Pastor Kayanja the benefits of the doubt. I'll say it again. Despite the, the above, I still did not believe what I was hearing or seeing, and wanted to give Pastor Kayanja the benefit of the doubt. I accordingly engaged a few civic and spiritual leaders with close contact with Pastor Kayanja. I requested for a meeting involving him, me, and the said leaders. But Pastor Kayanja avoided such a meeting. The above notwithstanding, I did not give this information that I had to the media. I did not hold any press conferences. I did not have talk shows. I did not go to, pub, to the public. I did not even go to police of, of, to claim of some kind of a complaint. I believe that the best way to solve these issues were, inter were supposed to be internal and, uh, and private. Instead, when he refused or he failed to attend a meeting on the subject, on the fifth day of October 2021, I sent him a letter which I also sent to his 
WhatsApp mess, uh, phone. I'll read this again. Instead, when Pastor Kayanja refused, instead, when Pastor Kayanja refused or failed to attend a meeting on the subject, on the 5th day of October 2021, I sent him a letter, which I also sent to him via WhatsApp on his phone, indicating that I did not believe the boys, and I implored him on the need to meet, discuss, and resolve this issue internally by a few leaders in the body of Christ. I was, however, shocked when I learned that instead of Pastor Kayanja meeting me, he went around I was, however, shocked to learn that instead of meeting me as a brother who had in good faith contacted him privately, he went ahead and initiated a criminal complaint against me, alleging that I had conspired with some boys or young men to tarnish his image or defend him. He wanted me to be arrested instead. When he made the complaint, the Directorate of Public Prosecution investigated his complaint and concluded that the interactions that I had with the boys who were alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Kayanja were in good faith as any elder or shepherd in society or a church would have. Any pastor, any leader can listen to a child, to a member, to any person who is, who is in grievance and who is looking for spiritual solutions. The DPP's office concluded that the complaint by Pastor Robert Kayanja of Miracle Center against me, Pastor Jackson Senyonga, had no merit and accordingly closed the complaint file. On a separate occasion, I established that the boys or these young people went to Pastor Kayanja's church at Miracle Center Cathedral alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Robert Kayanja and that they were subsequently arrested for criminal trespass. I also established that those boys lodged a complaint against Pastor Kayanja insisting that they were actually sodomized. So we have two files here. Pastor Kayanja complaining against the boys and the boys complaining against Pastor Kayanja. Unfortunately, the DPP opted to prosecute the boys for alleging that Pastor Kayanja uh, sodomized them and also for criminal trespass. But the same DPP's office decided to close the complaint of the boys against Pastor Kayanja for choosing them, for choosing him. Should actually uh, be looked into and that their files should be processed because that's the only way we are going to ever know what is going on here. So, it is my humble request that justice is not only done, but seen to be done. And this can only be achieved if the complainants by both sides both Kayanja and also the boys are given an opportunity to be tried in the courts of law. 
because that's the only office or jurisdiction empowered to deliver justice. As I conclude, I want to clear the air. I did not pay any boy to touch any pastor's name. I had all the tools in my hands to leak information, to release what I saw. But I never. I acted as a good Christian, as a good leader, and in confidentiality, I handled this issue. Again, my humble request is that Pastor Kayanja's voice should be heard with these allegations against the boys, if they trespassed, if they are saying these things out of line, he should be cleared. But at the same time, under the same breath, also the boys should be heard. If they were actually sodomized or not. And no one can ascertain to that except through the courts of law. Thank you so much. I have invited you here today uh, to throw some light on what you've been reading in the newspapers. Recently, uh, New Vision and other publications uh, wrote about me that I promised people 75 or 76 million shillings if they would go ahead and tarnish the name of Pastor Robert Kayanja of Miracle Center that he sodomized them. That is not true, and that is not accurate. So I want to state the facts so every one of you will understand what is going on around this saga. Sometimes, sometime in 2020 and 2021, a number of boys or young men approached me here at Christian Life Church claiming that they had been sodomized by Pastor Robert Kayanja of Ruaga Miracle Center. I believe these boys came to me because I'm a Christian leader who has for several years been outspoken about the various ills that are taking place in some of the Pentecostal churches in Uganda. Once again, some of the Pentecostal churches in Uganda, not all of the churches. The boys gave graphic details of what they say transpired. How they were recruited, lured with money and promises, and promises of a better life, and subsequently sodomized. They showed me what sub communications between one of them with Pastor Robert Kayanja, whose mobile number I knew. So I was able to establish that this communication was coming from the boy's phone and Pastor Robert Kayanja's phone. I established that personally. In the said WhatsApp messages, the boys of these young, or these young men alleged that Pastor Kayanja had sodomized them. They were, they were actually telling him of what he did to them. that they were injured as a result of that and required treatment and demanded for money from, uh, to treat them th their injuries. In the text messages, Pastor Kayanja never denied or contested those allegations and instead sent them money as demanded. They also played a phone voice recording of a, vo of a voice they claim to be of Pastor Robert Kayanja. The above, and more especially the WhatsApp communication messages and the reaction of Pastor Kayanja there too, was very disturbing and raised serious questions and concerns in my mind as they appeared to lend, to lend credence uh, to what the boys were alleging. Moreover this, 
is against the backdrop of the fact that over 20 years now, there has been per persistent similar allegations from different persons against Pastor Robert Kayanja. So you take what has been happening in the last 20 years, you look at the boys, some of them are crying, some of them are expressing uh, these concerns. It disturbed me. Despite the above, I still did not believe what I was hearing or seeing and wanted to give Pastor Robert Kayanja the benefit of the doubt. I accordingly engaged as a few civic and spiritual leaders whose close contact with him, with close contact with him, and requested for a meeting involving him, me, and the said leaders. But he avoided such a meeting. The above notwithstanding, I did not give this information that I had to the media. I did not hold any press conference or talk show or go public or go to police with a criminal complaint because I did not believe that that was the best way of resolving this issue. Instead, when he refused or failed to attend a meeting on the subject, I, on the 5th day of October 2021, sent him a letter, which I also sent to him via WhatsApp uh, uh, messages, uh, messaging, indicating that I did not believe the boys, and I implored him on the need to meet, discuss, and resolve this issue internally by a few leaders in the body of Christ. I also copied some of the key leaders in the country of the same letter. I was, however, shocked to learn that instead of Pastor Robert Kayanja meeting me as a brother who had in good faith contacted him privately, he had initiated a criminal complaint against me, alleging that I had conspired with some boys or young men to tarnish his image and to defame him. He wanted me to be arrested instead. When he made the complaint, the same complaint was investigated by the Directorate of Public Prosecution, which concluded that the interactions that I had with the boys who were alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Kayanja was in good faith as any leader or shepherd in society or church would, while listening to a child or to sheep with grievances. The DPP's office concluded that the complaint by Pastor Robert Kayanja against me, Pastor Senyonga, had no merit and accordingly closed the complaint file. Separately, I established that the boys or these young men went to Pastor Robert Kayanja's church at Miracle Center Cathedral alleging that they had been sodomized by Pastor Kayanja and that they were subsequently arrested for criminal trespass. I also established that the boys also lodged a complaint against Pastor Kayanja insisting that they were sodomized by him. Unfortunately, the DPP opted to prosecute the boys for alleging that they tarnished Pastor Kayanja's name and for criminal trespass they committed. But DPP, the same office, decided to close the complaint of the boys against Pastor Robert Kayanja, who they accused of sodomizing them. While there are likely to be some boys who may want to take advantage of the situation to make money, it is also important for DPP to know that they are also those boys who are insisting that they were actually sodomized and deserve to be hurt. So you have a situation where people are trying to get some kind of drama 
out of the saga, claiming that they were sodomized later on, changed their story, and then claiming someone was giving them money. They are fabricating these issues to confuse the public and the society about the whole thing. While those boys or young men would be there doing that, there is another sect of boys that are saying no. For us, we are sticking to the point, we are sodomized, and uh, all of that. I do not have the equipment and the system uh, to test these kind of allegations. I am just a church leader who is sympathetic about both sides, both Pastor Kayanja and the boys. But this is our jurisdiction. We are spiritual leaders. And when a spiritual person is having issues, we need to be able to come alongside him to try to resolve the issues. The jurisdiction which is empowered are to administer justice is the courts of law. So, in my humble view, it is important that justice is not only done, but seen to be done. And this can only be achieved if the complainants, both sides, Pastor Kayanja and the boys, not merely just one side, but both sides are given serious consideration. Let the DPP process the file for the boys so the courts will see what's going on there. And let the same DPP, just they already did it, they process uh, the complaints of Pastor Kayanja, and uh, that trial is going on. We should give both sides an opportunity to be heard. That's all I can say. But on record, I never bought or promised or gave anyone any money to tarnish anyone's name. But I pray that the boys will be heard just, last, just like Pastor Kayanja need to be heard. Thank you.